Good afternoon. <laughs> See the West Link. That here. is the horniest what? thing I've ever heard. Come on. Marvin, bring down here some of those chicken and waffles. <laughs> Mr. Potter. <laughs> I uh, feel good. Shit. This is unbelievable. It's absolute <laughs> chaos. <laughs> Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, your wee mate, Shane Todd. Before we get into this episode, I need to plug a few things. First and foremost, Patreon. Join the VIP club, become an official sipper. We've got it all going on over there. We've got the SSE podcast featuring Kieran Bartlett and Dave Elliott and DJ Mark McCabe live on there. It's all cut together in a nice sexy package. Fosty, great edit job on that. Who did it? Um, it's unbelievable. You get the bonus episodes on, on a Monday, which which is called the Special Brew. The last couple of episodes we recorded there, uh, shot in uh, LA. We've got one shot in Austin, Texas. We did this week's in Hollywood here in the studio. Uh, so we do the live stream, of course, every Friday. We are sponsored by none other than Nord VPN, not Nord Vupin, Nord VPN. What is a VPN? Dave? Well, it's a virtual private network, a tool that safeguards your internet connection and enhances your online privacy. It establishes a secure and encrypted pathway for your online data traffic. This tunnel is impenetrable, ensuring that no one can snoop on your internet activities, access your personal data or determine your actual IP address and geographical location because they're all trying to do that. Trying to snoop on you, trying to find out where they are. I'm looking at you, insert country. You know, I use this whenever I'm on tour to make sure I keep a secure tunnel. I like to be in an impenetrable tunnel when I'm on tour using hotel Wi-Fi. Sippers can get an exclusive NordVPN offer at nordvpn.com slash tea with me with no risk, 30 day money back guarantee. You can get your exclusive deal by going to nordvpn.com slash tea with me. To get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan, every two-year plan receives a bonus four months on top. Ooh. We're also sponsored by none other than Manscaped. Manscaped are the number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. You know it. You love it. They've been supporting us from the start. Dan, what's the uh, Manscaped thing I, I got this week and I loved? The Handyman. The Handyman. Always great when you get a handyman, um, you know, to, to do a job for you in the house. And this handyman's doing a job on my uh, chiselled face. It's a face trimmer that, Dan, would you say goes right to the bone? Almost, Not right to the bone, does it? Right to the skin. Right to the skin. It goes right to the skin. Dave, you okay? Yeah. <laughs> so this, day, I mean, look at this. If this guy got his hands on a handyman, <laughs> 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 he'd look like a big shave baby. Mm. It takes it right to the right to the wire. Um, I love it. I, I genuinely just got it as part of Manscaped's new pack. Took it home, used it, brought it on tour. It's great. It's it's got a slick design, is what I would say. It's very sexy. Fits in your palm. Um, so go check that out. And all Manscaped products, they have everything, especially coming up to Christmas. Let Santa bring you a smooth sack. Go to Manscaped.com. Use a code Tea with me for twenty percent off and free shipping. I can't hold them back any longer. Mm. La mm. Ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. my guest this week is a hairy face man. Yep. And it's coming up to the festive season, but this man's beard is black. Mm -hmm. Brown. I always... Brimsy. Brown. What colour would you say your beard is? Dark brown. But it's black? No, it's dark, dark brown. Because science, the race of people, Caucasians, cannot have black hair. Yeah, Italians. Yeah. No, they're just dark, dark, dark. They're not... The black hair. No. Yep. Dark brown. Maybe it's product they Science. use. Science. Um, my guest this week is none other than Dave Elliott. Welcome. No, Thank I you. welcome you. Yeah, well, I'm welcome to be here. I'm welcoming myself. No, you're yeah, not I'm, welcome you know to what? be here. No, you, sorry, what do you mean you're welcome to be here? <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just, you're I'm just said, feeling welcomed. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, welcome. I, I am feeling welcomed. <laughs> yes. I'm a wee bit discombobulated there. It's, it's, I'm startled by some goings on. So I'm, I'm feeling welcome. Feed. Yes, I feel welcome. Yes, <laughs> I feel welcome. I feel good. I, I want to talk. I did some manscaping today. True did story. you? Yeah, we. But I used them on yourself. Yeah, I used the manscape for my old bonds as well. Oh, hi. And then I thought, you know, I found the wee clip to go in the end. So 
I did downstairs as well, we tidy up because I don't want down there to be like this because I don't want to run the risk of people mistaking me for a child. Yeah. So if they see <laughs> down here and there's no pubes, I don't want them to be like, that's a kid. You know? So I like to keep it away. But why life. would they be seeing that? You, you, it's 2023, man. You don't know. You know Have you ever, um, like... Been mistaken genitalily wise for a child? <laughs> I, I don't know, not yet, but hopefully. Genitalily wise? Genitalily wise, yeah. Do you, yeah. genitalily wise, you play for Real Madrid? <laughs> Do you ever, um, have you ever accidentally exposed yourself? Well, not accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> fully on purpose what do you think of that one yeah <laughs> do you ever um, do you ever be like out and then you need to you need to piss and then your kids are like in the toilet with you and then they'll go to like mess about with the door in Costa that's my yeah. biggest fear yeah you know yeah, but have no, you had that uh, not so much with the kids it's, to your wife there's been no another time where it was once I, I don't know what I was doing I was having a really stressful day in work and I went, <laughs> I went to the toilet and I was sitting down the bog, and I just whatever way it was, I just wasn't I wasn't sitting comfortable. My wee Willie wasn't in the bowl right, so I just I did my pee at the start and just set my Willie on on top of the thing, and I was just laying back going, oh, trying to poo, and I hadn't, <laughs> and I'd gone into the disabled toilet, and you know why the disabled Sorry. toilets don't we'll talk about that after they don't really have good like handles to like it's hard to work. It's not a straight you know, because it's hard. So I just like, was laying back in the toilet and hadn't closed the door right and my boss just walked in. I was like, oh. and like, he's going to go to himself, what, what's he doing in there? Because I was And like, you were kind of, the thing like, is, oh, head back, Willie just sitting out. Yeah, the, the fact that yeah. it was sitting yeah, out yeah, looks weird. like, it looks like you're, you're sort of like presenting it as like a, like, like Salt Bay would maybe, when you go into his yeah. restaurant, he'd maybe present to you the cut of meat yeah, that you're going to get. I can't explain to him why. Yeah. Because it, it makes, still makes no sense and sounds like a lie. Not, no, well, he's not comfy. I, I just wasn't comfy. And I was, and, but it was the why the head was back. I'm like, Can I, I say? I fall asleep. That is, the mo- you mentioned there, hmm. the most disgusting thing, which is your Jimmy uh-huh. touching the seat. Yeah. In a, on a, in like a No, not a seat because I don't you. use a seat. Just the rim. I got my Jimmy caught under a seat when I was a kid. I'm traumatised so don't No it seat. doesn't matter If it touches yeah. anything But I, I always give it A big wipe down first I'm very important No you will <laughs> Yeah yeah. Dave doesn't use uh-huh. a seat No What do you mean You don't use a seat this, Right when I was younger Right Sorry sorry yeah. sorry Sorry mm-hmm. Sorry Yeah I, I found sorry. out Through this before Do you not know this If I knew What I think you're telling me yeah. We wouldn't be best friends Right okay Are you telling me Uh huh You're stink. You're stinking <laughs> Are you telling me You don't use the the toilet seat. Yeah. You lift that up and the you rim. just sit. I rim it. Yeah, I rim it. What's wrong with that? You're stinking. But hold on. That's that's that. I, I swear I could be sick. No have you, have you it? Have you done that in this building? Every building. I always do it. <laughs> and then sometimes I don't even rim. I just squat. I just hover aboard if it's, if it's a dirty rim. I could the squat. All fine. the bums. All the bums touch the seats. The bums don't touch the rims. Everyone. Everyone's no. pisses on that. Everyone's pisses everywhere. It's in the toilet. The toilet's a cauldron of piss and shite. It's splashing everywhere. There's germs everywhere. We're always getting... We're touching bums. We're touching dicks. We're in the toilets. <laughs> That's what's going on. But then you put... Mm-hmm. You put your thing... It was sore, mate. On the... I did, it was uncomfortable. I didn't want it... Right. What's worse? I didn't want the t- top of my willy touching underneath the rim. That's even some worse thinking, so I... No, that's it. That's that could be the cleanest part of the toilet. Oh, but it might not be. I, nobody knows. There's not been enough. So you sit on that. Co- you sit on the cold rim. Yes, I do. I said because <laughs> because whenever I was little, right? You're not on no. Yes, no, Stephen. No, I do. Stephen. Whenever I was a little bit younger, and I say a little bit younger, I was I was a child. I got my wee bum caught on you know the wee things that used to put in the toilets to refresh them. There was like the way you hook yeah, it on. Yeah, your bum caught it. So my bum hit it and it was sore and I had sort of like moved on it and I would nip my willy between the seat and the rim and that was one of the sorest things that ever happened. So I was like, never again will I use a seat and risk cutting my willy off. So Man, I'm just I think there. you got to, you got to, you got to evaluate your life because yeah, I won't. I'm going to get murdered in the comments here and I don't think yeah. I've done anything wrong. I I won't sit on a unfamiliar toilet seat that's not the one in my house. Yeah, but you'll I'll put also, tissue I'll put tissue the whole way around it multiple you, times. But you will you will eat out a raw chicken. So I mean you can't be here talking to me about germs. Like you'll get stuck in there. You'll be uh salmonella in that out like and whereas I'm not licking nothing. I'm just it's my bare willy. And then I wash my hands and my willy after every time I go to the toilet. You don't wash your willy. Yeah, I do. 
I would do wash my wet leg like. Yeah, but not every time you go to the toilet. No, because then that'll be another fucking, fucking <laughs> box of frogs for me to deal with. My <laughs> son walks in. Oh no, I don't use the toilet seat here. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I'm not a pervert. Because you tell me this: could you wash your willy in a sink with hot water and soap and not at least get a semi? <laughs> like you're rubbing yeah. it like this. You're, yeah, it would be you, right. Well, here we go. Next what, Patreon exclusive. What? Right, this is what, what is it about do. doing that that would make you go? I, I just think if you, you know if you just rubbed it with a bit of soap. <laughs> I don't know what else. For the start, you Why need you to bring your one? own. You need to bring a wee footstool because there's no way my wee short legs would be able to reach. Oh, your so wee short willy. <laughs> Why are you the horniest guy in the world? As soon as you touch it, whoa. no. But there's a difference if I'm just touching it. Like if I go boing boing. Yeah, how fine. long are you gonna take but to wash it? To wash it? I don't know. Because <laughs> if, if, but if you if you roll it like that, would it not feel nice? Why are you rolling it like that? <laughs> to get it cleaned. <laughs> to give it a wee wash. Oh, and it's easier to manoeuvre when it's got a wee bit of turgidness about it. You know what I mean? It's easy to get underneath and clean when it's... Oh. So your technique... <laughs> and I don't mean to... See, podcast now, especially yeah. mine, I've been reflective. Yeah. It's immature. It is. But you're telling me to clean your penis. Uh-huh. You're like a guy make it like a... Like with flint, yeah, starting a fire. Start a fire. Yeah. And the fire is no, in your... No, no, Shane, I'm not... This is not how I generally do... <laughs> wash my penis but if I was washing it in a public bathroom that's what I have to do to try try and make it not look weird because any other way you do it it looks like you're trying to hide something yeah you know whereas if you walk in you're like all right bro you know at least the guy's like oh no he's obviously touched the rim with his I could see the way you live your life I could see you like what does that even mean I could see I could see you kneeling down out of your urinal to clean it I could see you with my you, what? Was with, I could see I you. I thought you meant with my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the way you approach bathrooms, I could see you taking one knee down beside your rhino, and then like the trough. You, I could see you may as well the way you, the way you you sit with your seat yeah. on the rim and touch your willy in the room. I could see you just being like, oh, I may as well just like use this and like you get the wee yellow soap, yeah, uh-huh. the wee yellow things and rub the <laughs> yeah, rub them. I may as well. That's no, what that's, you that's do. That's fucking ridiculous. When I use the urinal, what I do is I, I turn around, tuck my dick between my legs, and piss backwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, do you ever be oh. in like uh, public toilets and sometimes think as like a man there by himself, do you think you could give out like code by mistake? What do you mean? I'm at the toilets down Hibernia Street in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. The last time I used them, say like a year ago, I walked in and I was whistling. Oh, and no. then I thought, what if that is like a. <laughs> you walk out of cubicle code? and four guys like a village people are sitting there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We've answered the call. Like, you know, and the Power Rangers, and they all, they all gather. The but, Power Bottom Rangers just <laughs> but I, that was oh. a, That was a genuine thought of mine. I was whistling on my way in, and I thought, is this, like, a well-known code to attract attention? Then I stopped whistling, and then I went, or is that a code? Do, yeah. not, do not whistle? Is that, is that giving that, it off? In, Dan, in dog and circles, isn't that where, <laughs> like, you put the lights on, and then you break, and you turn them off and on, and that's how you give people signals? So I don't know whether you whistle and stop and yeah. Anyone that's into like this CD world of public toilet sex, let us know. Uh, man, I'll be. But I had a weird toilet. The, George experience. Michael, the king's dead. Pardon? The king of it's dead. George. R. P. George. Yeah. Yeah. I thought George, was... There was nothing fun. You know, me and you love George Michael. Yeah. Right. We have like that's one of our bonds. Mm-hmm. We just love the music of George Michael. Yeah. And the attitude of George yes. Michael. Yes. And whenever he got caught in public toilets in London. Uh-huh. In like Hyde Park or wherever, he clap and come probably. Yeah. He um, you know, a lot of pop stars probably would have used their PR team to sort of like, mm-hmm. you know, put out a statement and deny it and all that sort of thing. George brought out the song Outside. Yeah. Let's go outside <laughs> in the sunshine. Well, and 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 really released a song about having full gay sex in public toilets. Yeah, but that was also so sly as well because th- th- it wasn't a dude doing it that t- touted on him. It was, and this is how I always find the weirdest thing, a policeman pretending, you know, what to catch him. Undercover? Sting, yeah. 
So it wasn't Sting himself. <laughs> <laughs> that could be libelous, but it was. <laughs> Kieran Imagine Barton would be like, wow, Sting's in that. Like, <laughs> Me whistling, walking into public toilet yeah. and seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> Will you remember? Yes, I'll never forget this thing ever. Uh, but So what do you mean? So there was a, there was an undercover yeah. policeman to catch men. But how far do you go you? as an undercover cop? Like, how far do you go? Like, because you, you're not yeah. walking in seeing George washing himself in the sink. There must be a point where he's like, you know, actually, does he take it out and cuff it? Like, what does he... Yeah. Because there has to be a point when he's engaging in something. Or as a policeman, do you have to do, like, you know the way, like, a policeman might, if you're underage or something, think you've been drinking, he will, let me smell your breath or something? You know, does he... <laughs> Does he do something like that, or will he? Yeah, like a cigar. Or will he? Yeah. <laughs> Guilty. Give me your... And I'll be like, no, I swear, I just touched it underneath the rim. It wasn't, it wasn't that's why it smells like that, I'm sorry. Have you been rimming tonight? Yes, but not like that. <laughs> not the weird, just I put my dick on the rim of the toilet because I don't use a seat. Yeah, that's even weirder than... Um, oh. Yeah, imagine imagine you were like, uh, my dad was police. he was undercover for 20 years. Oh, what, like in a narcos mm-hmm. gang? Nah, just in public toilets. <laughs> <laughs> but then do you ever read the stories that appear about undercover cops who just have had like full affairs and kids and all and he's like well I was committed to the bit you we know, mean Daniel like Day Lewis of the PSNI yeah yeah it was yeah. totally being an undercover policeman would be wild yeah it'd be, it'd be stressful I wouldn't like it now to be fair that one would be good I wouldn't I wouldn't do you George think away, you're good at lying on the <clears throat> spot if you have to like do you think you would be a good you would be a good undercover policeman no I would sweat and all, get nervous. That is a big tale of and yours, isn't like, it? Yeah. You're the reverse Prince Andrew. And then, yeah, and Prince Albert. And Catherine was saying to me the other day, I lied to her about something, about, yeah, eating ice cream. That's what I'd done. I'd eaten the last day of the ice cream. And she'd be like, do you eat all that ice cream? And I was like, no. Yeah. And then the first thing was, I hid it. And she's like, where have you hidden it? Go get it. <laughs> I'm like, and she was, you're lying, aren't you? And I went, yeah. Yeah, I just, I can't hold a lie. I just gave it. And she's like, I hate that you lied to me there. And I said, like, yeah. like, how'd you know? And she's like, because... There was ice cream, now there's not. Yeah. And, and you have you're ice cream not looking at my eyes, you're sweating everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, sorry. So yeah, I don't I don't think I'd be good at that at all. I get so nervous. And I try to warn people. Uh, here here's where I go wrong. I'd add too much to the lie. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. There'd be no yes, need I, I do. There would be yeah. no need for me to uh-huh. you know, to just be like, you know, oh you you narc and I could yeah. just go, No. I would add wait, I'd be like, I can't be because I am. Um, <laughs> I'm. I couldn't be because, you know. L- and here, let me tell you this. That's what I'm at. Yeah, I go. I can fly. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, and then I can fly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It would be fun. It'd be a hell of a rush. But do you <sighs> think that, say, you infiltrated a drugs gang? Say you were a cop and you infiltrated a drugs uh-huh. gang, and your job is to be one of them and be mates with them. Do you think if if you were there for years? You'd actually become mates with them, yeah, sure. and you would, and then you would, f- you feel so sly when you betray them, because yeah. it wouldn't be like, ha ha, got you when you call, you know, Seal Team Six, and you'd be like, oh, got you, and then the guy would be like, Davey, yeah, what have you done? I thought we were mates, yeah, yeah, you're my actual husband now. I wonder how many of these guys just actually go in on it. Oh, you have to, you know what I mean? Don't you? But no, but that's... I mean, I mean, like say to the guys, yeah, but then you'd be tempted sometimes, wouldn't you, if you really. Yeah. But yeah, that's why you wouldn't go into it. Like, cause I always think like I am into like reading like the troubles books, informing things and stuff like that. Cases like I always love to read about that in the papers. But then I think how nervous would you be all the time for everyone? Cause you don't know who you could ever trust. Yeah. Cause then like if your handler was just like, yeah, I've got all the information we need, you could just out you. And then if anyone finds okay. stuff out, yeah, <laughs> be like, that'd be so funny. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we'll hear about him. <laughs> oh no, he's not informant. <laughs> Worse. <laughs> oh dear, it'd be terrible. Beef knife. Be. What would um? <laughs> it make sense. Oh. Well, uh. what do you think? Say when you were younger uh. and you wanted the. What did you want to be? You know, it's one of two things. Yeah. <laughs> so shit. One was an astronaut. Okay. And two was a lollipop man. So I feel I like thought, one is more achievable than yeah, the other. Yeah, I felt like if if I didn't get to be in NASA, I could just be outside Hollywood. I love it's the other way around. You're like, yeah. if, I, if I don't make it as a lollipop man, I'd like to go to space. But then I had a real moment where I realised my dream of being an astronaut would never be. I was at a fair 
and I was getting in a ride and the guy was trying to put the thing down on me <laughs> and I was like and he was kept on going I was like this isn't going to click and he was really getting angry and I was like oh I don't, you know, don't mean to do it and he was like no 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 I will do I will do and I was like okay and he's pushing down pushing down and I was like oh I'm just too like, and I, like this and he went <laughs> like, yeah. son of a bitch what did they do bungee cord you no I just didn't go in there that's so uh. embarrassing having to get off and walk past everyone who's queued to get on oh. did I ever tell you about my brush with the light pop man? No. Oh, yeah. yes. Last day of P7, I maybe told this on a pod before. Um, last day of P7, we had a light pop man called Walter, mm-hmm. who's brilliant as a light pop man. I was going to say, I don't know how you could be a bad light pop man, yeah. but probably causing an accident where a load of kids get run yeah. over. I mean, bad what, but what if man. you're the banter light pop man and you pretend it's you all right? Tell them to it's go. all good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I can. <laughs> Whenever Moses was like, here, Romans, come on. <laughs> you know. Walter, Walter was the Moses of our primary school and the upper Newton Arch was a Red Sea. Yeah, This guy was brilliant. Everybody loved him. And on my last day at P7, so everybody used to high-five his lollipop stick and you had to jump up to do it. Excuse me? <laughs> He's like, here, my lollipop stick's in my trousers and hey, boys, go ahead. Get a real handle on it. Um, <laughs> so what you would do is you'd jump up, because the lollipop stick was probably at his head level, so you jumped up and gave it a high five. Everyone loved to do it. Walter loved it. On my last day of P7, I got carried away. Giddy, would have had a party, bring your own sweets. I was E-numbered up. So I walk out. On the E's. I was like, this is brilliant. No, last day of school. Too many emotions, you know what I mean? Last day of school. And instead of jumping up for a final high five on Walter's lollipop mm-hmm. stick, I jumped up and headed it like you were heading the football. Just a wee silly boy. And I was like, ah! And, and gave it a... And I was like, that's so, such a cool way to go out. In my head, I was like, I'm going out a legend. No <laughs> long-lasting friendships from school, but I'm going out a legend here. And I was walking to my dad's car. It's maybe like half a mile up, up this road. And all these like girls were like looking at me and like sort of like, real shocked and like some of them were like screaming and stuff and pointing at me and I was like god they're taking it really badly that I'm leaving primary school I was like guys I'll call I'll call and uh, I walked for uh, kept walking and everyone was <gasps> to me and stuff and I was like the fuck like what's all this about got up to my dad's car and my dad goes what happened I said what do you mean he's like look at yourself I looked full like you know remember the poster we used to have up Christian Bale in American Psycho when the blood splatters mm-hmm. all over his face there was metal screws in Walter's lollipop stick to keep oh. the lollipop on the stick. I fully hated that, but it was so like adrenaline rush the last day of primary school that like blood was just oozing from my head. So all these girls <laughs> leaving yeah. school, like talking about, I'll still ring you and all, just walk out and just see me. <laughs> Full blood coming down my face. All right, girls. <laughs> you know, but see, to kids that would be hard to see, but to most yeah. people seeing a fella walking down a Newton Arch Road with blood down it, it's kind of a normal occurrence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but one thing you mentioned there that I don't think spoken enough about what makes you a weird person, and you can tell from a young age, see if you call back to primary school and you've left, weird. I did it once and felt weird about it because... You were 17. <laughs> I'm naked. Um, I felt weird about it because people in my secondary school were like, we're calling back. So I went with them. And when I went in, I realized that like, I don't need to be here. I went back to Miss Thompson's P5 uh-huh. class and I wrapped the door on and she's like, oh, and she didn't remember my name. She's like, oh, there he is. Oh, no. And I said, oh, it's Shane. She's like, yes, yes, yes. And then she kind of remembered. And then uh. she was like, so what do you do? And, and I, I remember just every... Because I thought, in my head, walking back to primary school, I was like, I'm going to walk in in my big school uniform. Uh-huh. The blazer on and all. And all these P5s, all these kids are going to be like, fuck me. He's here and all. And, you know, wanting mentorship and guidance and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And I was 11. And I was like, oh, I just thought I'd say hello. And she's like, yes. Cheers for that, yeah. See you later. And I was like... All right, kids, stay at it. But it's so weird too, because then he's like, "Well, what are you at now?" And you're like, "Well, fucking still school." Like, Same thing. Yeah, just, just different building. Yeah, yeah. still school. Like yeah. I'm still a kid. You yeah. know, not different. You sit in the desk. You're like, "Kids, <laughs> life's a funny old game." All right, I'm looking at a lot of you, thinking you'll never get to where I am. Like, but any year, quite literally, you literally will. You will. You'll be here. What did you prefer, primary school or big school? Oh, big school. Like big school was great. Enjoy primary school. I too, prefer primary school, but I prefer big school. Like. But then at big school, that's where you separate the wheat from the chaff, like. And I was not a... I wanted to be a lollipop man, I was like, chief. So I was not, yeah, chaff and stale. No, so I was, was weak. Wheat? Yeah. Weak. Weak? I can't have, <laughs> I can't have wheat. 
<laughs> but I, yeah, I, I don't know. I looking back on it, I just had a good time at school. There's nothing really I got career wise out of it other than I think I just loved primary. I went to Strandtown Primary School and I loved it. I thought primary school was great. But Strandtown, yeah, I thought you're a Hollywood guy. I am, but I went to Strandtown okay, Primary School. Okay, where is East Belfast? What's that? Did you go Sullivan Secondary School? Yeah, didn't What's get good? in. What's good you go to? Campbell. Campbell East Belfast too. Mm. Weird. I haven't taught you primary and Sullivan. Mm. Yeah. But you, you've denounced Hollywood as your hometown? Oh, it's my original birthplace. It's my birth town. My hometown's Bangor. Mm. I'll tell you this. I You got really like aggressive. Like, oh, I'm going to fucking talk now. I don't go. like being... Yeah. Huh? I don't like it when anyone questions my hometown. Okay, cool. No, I'll say this. That's just where you lay your hat in, or in your heart. You don't have to live here of any. It's where you lay your hat in your heart. Yep. Banger. Yeah. Where I lay my hat in my heart. <laughs> yeah. But you know, at least you know uh, you have to have some connection. But in your heart, if you believe you're from somewhere, do your thing. <laughs> like this face. <laughs> hey, fuck. We are done. Cut this is my time. Is done. This is my time. That's fair. Yeah. yeah New yeah. business sets up. Come and tell me. <laughs> and pay you. Speak to me. Yeah, yeah. I Man, would love it if you were taking If I was extorting businesses. Yeah, that'd be so great. And I yeah. didn't really realise I was doing it. I was like, no, it's just if they want to open up here, they have to come and see me and I make it okay and they just pay yeah, me every month. That would be very um, terrible. There's apparently something that's come out where it's like, there's a study done that says homework is like not beneficial to anyone. Yeah, I read it. Homework thing. is the slyest thing. Oh. I saw, do you ever see, you know, obviously we love to send each other memes, I have one saved that you'll 10 out of 10 love for later, but there was one I read yesterday and it made me laugh a lot, it was like, you know, uh, Will Ferrell like freaking out in something, and it was like, whenever the teacher contacts you and says your kid's got learning difficulties, but you did the homework, <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, oh no, I need to talk about your kid, there's a problem. I remember oh. my dad, we were learning multiplication. Right, yeah. easy for you to say. <laughs> and <laughs> like multiplying, mm -hmm. and uh, my dad was trying to describe it to me without himself knowing how to describe it. Yeah, and he got like, "Do you ever? Did you ever at home have? And don't go no, because my family have money. Did you ever have a box of shrapnel, like, like one piece, two piece, five tens? Uh, yes, like a Tupperware, nearly like without the lid, just full of yes, yes, absolutely. Do people have that anymore? No, surely not. You remember, and you find the old twenty p in it, mm -hmm. right? So we had we had a big uh, ours was a biscuit tin. But you know it was sly. My parents made me do that. That was my holiday money. So they go, you have to take out the bank like a wee dick, <laughs> you know, <laughs> going in with a fox's biscuit tin into the, the Northern Bank in High Street. And go, there you go, that's my holiday money. Oh, coming out seven pound, <laughs> <in cash. laughs> seven quid twelve. Have a good holiday, bro. Buy that Arsenal kit, you wanker. You know, <laughs> I um, yeah, I remember. Having that tin and uh, what, what am I? What was I talking about? Your dad multiplying. My dad goes basically the easiest way I can describe multiplication is, and he went and got a load of two peas and started stacking them up. So like seven two peas, another seven two peas, another seven two peas, and he's like, say I have seven times two, and he brought two stacks of seven peas oh. over. He's like, er, that's fourteen p. I was like, no. <laughs> and he's like, so you just think about it like that? And I was like, I don't understand. And he's like, say I had three times seven. He brings another wee thing, two peas over. And he did this for ages. And I went into school the next day and they were like, what's eight sixes? And I was like, I don't know, but if you give me a load of two <laughs> peas, I can show you what it is. Yeah. But like, that was just the way he was trying to describe it to me, but I've never been able to do maths oh, ever. No, because I, the biggest shock of my life was that I passed my GCSE maths because they had yeah. got me a tutor and all. And I remember the tutor. Oh, I had to go to your tutor. Yeah, and, and I didn't want to go. And I remember the guy, he had, a, he had a strange voice. He was very nasally, spoke through the nose. He was like, I know you want to be here as much as I want to have you here. But me? But you, yeah, <laughs> But he was like, "Listen, you just need to get through this because there was a whole thing." Benefit. My teacher was like, "You need, you need to drop down now." At the time, <laughs> pardon. You need to. You know, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to pass your GCSEs, <laughs> here's a sum for you: six. And my nine. deck plus uh, your mine <laughs> <laughs> equals jail. No, uh, <laughs> but let's you know, go outside. <laughs> but they had said the school had said that my folks basically you can drop down because I was in like regular maths but we dropped down to what was known as in my day as something that rhymes with maths and starts with an S and a P 
so something mad, you know what I mean? The one said, no, I guess I get cancelled. It's bad, man. And they're like, you need to do it, go down to do that. And I was like, no, I'm too stubborn, I'll pass. And he said, you won't. He said, you're dumb. You, <laughs> you literally won't pass. You, you can't. <laughs> so they're like, all you need to do is just get a D here. And I was like, can you stop with the sex? And you so said, drop down and get a D. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, just get through it. Here, so I did it and somehow got a B. And like, okay. we were like, to get a remark almost I was like yeah. are you sure yeah. and nothing has made me more smug ever because my whole family were kind of like you're dumb and all that like, yeah. yeah I'm pretty dumb that doesn't help you know yeah. that doesn't encourage me no I was so stupid like with miles and all that kind of stuff stuff but then you like, don't need it but school school is so weird it's I think it's mad now that I haven't had kids to look at them at that age and go what do you want to do with forever like yeah. you don't know you don't yeah. know unless you try it yeah and I gotta get a degree in criminology and criminal justice why yeah you know no and idea. are you like is that a bit like say someone who studied French for A level uh -huh. you say to them now are you still really good at French or like I, I can't remember it at all do you know about the criminal would you still be up on it or does it change all the time it changes all, like it, it changes all the time and because yeah. there was it wasn't one specific subject it was made up of like and I maybe liked like three of the modules and some like I hated social I couldn't focus my mind around what sociology was or social policy because it was people just talking about other people's opinions on things and I was like oh so and so says that if this I'm like what if he's wrong mate they're yeah. like doesn't matter it's just a theory and I go well, my theory is he's talking shit right. you know and I always had this sort of back and I just couldn't get my head around it at all and then I didn't know what like in my head I thought it was going to be like you know, Clarice from the Science of the Lambs, I'll come out and just analyse people's minds. Right. And then I just came out of it and just went and worked in B&Q. You know what I mean? It's like, there's no, there are no Hannibal Lecters here. Yeah. So I was like, I don't even know what I wanted to do. And then, yeah, you know, I've ended up doing this. So it's weird. How is, um, how's the bonds, mate? I'll get back to that before we get away from the toilets because I need to tell you the story. Okay. I did a gig the other night and it was, just when we're talking about weird toilet etiquette, do you know? Do you have Do you have any wee like quirks or any traditions or things you're like? I need to do this before a gig, or like it's just wee things you do. Like I'll more often not strip a label off a bottle of water I'll, before you I go on stage. That. Just do that. I like to go in, and in order to find my bearings in a place, I like to do a poo, settle the nerves. Yeah. You know, you don't want to go on stage. Unscrew the toilet seat from yeah. your, with your B and Q skills. Yeah. So you don't want to do. Uh, I, no. I, I I do. <clears throat> I would say I don't. I would go. I don't have any rituals. Mm -hmm. I definitely do. I like to have. Uh, if I'm feeling a little bit tired. I like to have a coffee before the show. Um, I like to have bottled water. Mm -hmm. um, and nothing really apart from you that. You love your wee melon, don't you? You like to have a wee thing of melon? Well, yeah, can cantaloupe specifically. Sorry. That's if I've got a drive to a show, if I've got a long drive mm -hmm. and we're going to pass a Marxist, I'll, mm -hmm. get some, I'll get some cantaloupe. So I, I wouldn't say it's a ritual. You said dry. I thought you said dry, like in order just to like wet your whistle, you need a wee, yeah. wee cantaloupe. Fetch the cantaloupe. Um... <laughs> So no, that's not a ritual. Yeah, that's a preference. So I'm at this gig, which again, it's one of these ones. I, Where it could, is it? it? It could go either way. It's in Franklin's Bar. It was it ended up being a great gig in the end, but it was one of those. Do you ever go to gigs where you don't know what the setup is and you and you're worried about what could go wrong? Yeah. So I was a bit stressed out about this because again, it's not. It's if you're sort of the one that's the point the contact of organising it, you panic because you don't want it to be bad for your, your mates who are on, um, involved too and you're like yeah. so much stress so I went in try and calm the nerves so I'll have a wee poo right so I went in the toilets were totally quiet dead no one was there I was there at the door I then heard like we rattle at the door and then you're in there doing your so business so I'm in there doing my business <clears throat> and the guy goes oh is anyone in there and I went yeah I am and he goes oh I want in <laughs> <laughs> I was like <laughs> and, I, and I went yeah well just give me a minute and he was like no worries but, it's like, but was there other cubicles? Yes, but I don't know you why. You didn't know whether he wanted in with you no, or... No, I know he wanted in, but it's like, I don't know, does he know etiquette of the toilet? Like, you have yeah. to wait till somebody's done. Yeah. He's like, I oh, know, but I want in. And it was yeah. like, but, and I, you know, you're sitting there going, what what, what does he want Did me to do Did that put you up? Were you able to relax then? No, because this is the thing. I think I had a couple more pop pops left in me. And I like quiet, the pop pop, you know? So if you're in there, you don't want to go. I think you need to go and see a doctor. But do you know what I mean? The big, the big fart noises that echo through the toilet, especially when you don't have the seat down, it doesn't muffle any noise. Right. So I didn't want him to just be standing outside the door and maybe be going. Yeah, yeah. You know? So I had to really kind of like hold my, like do breath work to try and get it out. And yeah. then you're wiping, and you, you know he's listening to the of the thing. You're like, oh, it's just stressing me out. Was that that's going down your bum? No, it's pulling, pulling, <laughs> pulling the toilet roll out. But then again. Oh. 
You look like you were very liberal with a toilet roll there. Yeah, because I'm not buying it. You know what I mean? When in public place, I just use so it. So let me ask you then, yeah. what's your home etiquette with taking toilet roll for an individual wipe versus being in public? Until my bum's clean, Shane. No, like I don't, that's I'm not, not like, what I'm asking. Oh, no, a four would have still got sm- like peanut butter smears. It's not what I'm, I'm asking. leaving it. Not what I'm asking. Okay. On every individual wipe that you do, uh-huh. how much toilet paper will you take for that one Ooh. wipe? Probably sheets. probably three folded. So I'll take three sheets, fold, wipe. Snap. Yeah. Snap. No, I'm a folder, not a scruncher. I don't agree in scrunching. The scrunch is uh, no. weird to me, although I used to be a scruncher. But then I think our scrunchers, because maybe, because I've heard some women, oh, I scrunch. And it's like, I don't know, because instead of like having testicles in a willy, they've got maybe a vagina or whatever it is people have nowadays. And maybe that's just apparatus-wise easier to clean but you know i don't want to like oh if i had a um vagina. Yeah, you're right can you say it can, yeah can we say that punani if i had a punani. punani yeah right to use the right term if i had a punani <laughs> <laughs> we did the same single word science class <laughs> <laughs> if i had a uh punani yeah i i think i would scrunch yeah for to wipe that the poon nanny yeah or the bum the punani okay yeah but i think then for my bum I would fold yeah you know? then again people are like oh you can't wipe I don't know there's a lot of there's a lot of rules so what will out. you do then if you're in public in public toilets or at a restaurant or whatever you'll you'll take loads I'll just take because here's the thing right at home I have a higher quality toilet roll yeah I feel like quilted I like I like to protect my bum whereas in public it's almost like sandpaper sometimes so you yep. know, and another thing too but is more does more of it make it better I don't like to accidentally finger my bum you only like the purposely do it. <laughs> Correct. You know what I mean? At least I know what's coming up. I don't want to have a wee sheet and then I go in to wipe it with vigor. Yeah. And then just... <laughs> Who's he? Right up. <laughs> the guy that was trying to get in. <laughs> yeah. David's vigor, I am welcome. <laughs> See, I don't want to just pop in. You know what I mean? Well, then don't the wipe paper. like that. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but it really gets a good clip. Like you're you know? blowing a strike. Yeah. <laughs> Like I wipe like I'm trying to get candy floss, you know, I really get <laughs> up and round and then <laughs> take it away. You wipe uh This is standard or sitting. we've gone into way too much of what I do in toilet. Standard or sitting. Oh I, I sit. I oh can. no, oh no, I'm not gonna tell you this, but this is gonna be right, even more accurate. Just say it, right. I go I'm between my down. legs to do it. What do you mean? Like I go underneath my legs to do it. I'd say a lot of people do. I don't know. A lot of people go from behind, but I and, and I do it left handed, only left handed. So you be your right handed? Yes. So you go in between. Now, I used to have a toilet when I was in my student house, it was very tight squeeze and you couldn't have got any leverage on the right side, so I just and it's just So you're stuck. not there anymore. I know, but I'm just used to doing it now. Yeah. You know, so I feel like you know, there's more there's what more access to the anus going underneath Why than there is. Doing this? Like you're swirling <laughs> yes, wa- yeah. red, red wine? <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel I can get a better. Cl- I I really like a clean bum, you know. And I went through a period <laughs> there opinion. where I, because I had kids, I had access to baby wipes more. So I was wiping and then it's baby wiping. But then I clogged up the whole plumbing system and had to get a guy out to just. And he's like, "There's a lot of baby wipes here." And I'm like, oh, "Fuck, the kids must have been flushing them without me knowing." <laughs> and then Catherine's like, "Well, you did that, did but you?" But you can get flushable wet wipes. But they still aren't fully flushable. They don't. Says you. Melt down, that's fake news. They still get stuck in the pipes. And you know what happened to me one time too? I used them. Well, you should, you got to stop. You no, got to stop. I can't. So I was. Even when I have another. I had to get another, like, because my, my house plumbing's quite old system. And it's two houses connected into the one. And I had to get a guy out to just do a clear of the pipes to release it. And what had happened is my neighbour had put some stuff down the toilet. And he got out and we lifted the lid. And he was like. <laughs> Clean. Did you watch this happen? Yeah, and he was cleaning out. But then what I had to see, I how see, could you? Why? Why did you watch it? Because I was just curious to know where the like the the manhole was and stuff. Which <laughs> I thought you too know. much. But and he lifted it. I had to watch my neighbor's actual poo just float down, like and it was just out, like like a sweet terracotta tube, and it's just one wee smeared poo, and I was like, you definitely need fiber. You know, yeah, you need fiber. yeah, it's yeah. Not good. And it was weird, and I found it weird looking at her. Since. I wouldn't like to look down a manhole cover like that. No, I wouldn't like that at all. No, but then that's that's part of being sh- being shit about being old. You have to get people to look after your plumbing the odd time. You have to do, and again, when you have a man out, or have, or oh, a man, yeah, yeah, a man, man, you could have a lady. Yeah, but punani? La- ladies have punanis, but more often than not, ladies don't like like just pulling shit out of drains. Some do. 
Well, fair enough. But in this occasion, it was a man out. Right. And you know, when if you have a man out to deal with like man stuff in your house, you always feel like you have to hang about and be like, oh, I know where that hole is and all. I don't worry about that and all. And then I'm standing there, not having a clue what he's doing. He's just, and I'm just smelling all the shit. That's horrible. Yeah. But I have to pretend like an automat. Yes. Because you look like a guy who knows the crack, yes. but you don't. But I make a wild cup of tea. So I right, can say, right, like, right, you know right. what, while you're dealing with all that, do you want to? Yeah. But then the guy who does my drains, he comes out once a year just to, you know, catch up, really. And we had a mouse again. A mouse? But see, you live very much in mouse territory, don't you? you wee bit of, there's a wee rivers near you, and there's wee, like, there fields is, yeah. and all. So it, we're going to have to just, but we... How many? One. Mm -hmm. People go, well, if there's one, there's more. Not always true. Yeah. Because what's happened is, you know yourself, when you bring the, when you've got the two kids in the car and you bring them into the house, uh -huh. front door's going to be open for a little while. Yeah. You know, these li these little bastards are seeing that and go, I want in. I don't want to tell you this, but have you ever seen the videos on YouTube of mice and rats going through plumbing systems and all? No. There's like a, an experiment set together? up to show how... Working together? They could be. I've, I've seen Ratatouille. They can... Right. But these guys can just get in up the toilet, up the plumbing. They can get, it's not just your door. They can get in anywhere. And they if can they contort want in, their wee in. bodies. They can contort their wee bodies and then turn into like wee flat, like almost like furry dinner plates and just slide underneath. Mm. And then they're in your house just eating your food, pissing you off. We you don't. know I killed a mouse? I scarred it to death once in my house in Sydney. What did it do? Watch you on the toilet? No. <laughs> it is like, I don't know how to get up here. His, his behaviour is so unorthodox. Why is he coming from underneath? And where's his dick? I'm like, oh, it's on the bowl. Don't worry. <laughs> but I, I had gone, my, you know my house in Sydney, I had, the, had the, the wee roof hatch and I could hear the mouse screaming and for some reason... Screaming? Like, you know, screeching, just making mouse noises. No, no. No. Yeah, that, that's all right. That's it. <laughs> what mouse do you have? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like right and for some reason I was like I'm gonna fucking go up here and start this mouse so I was like Phew, get myself psyched up because I mean the mouse is tiny and I'm big and I shouldn't be as afraid of it mouse as always mouse tiny me big but he's got germs <laughs> you know mouse could kill me with germs <laughs> why am I speaking like a caveman <laughs> mouse could kill me with germs so I thought right I'm gonna go up so I have a wee st a stick to like open the roof and then yep. I did that and I pulled the ladders down and I had my stick and I climbed up a bit and I could still hear it scuttering about and I got my stick and I just went up and started banging my stick whoa, whoa! and I'd given it a heart it just died it just lay there and I did a wee shit and it died and I was like that's really great and I felt terrible because it was just lying up there yeah and, old, and I was like fuck is it dead or is it playing dead but it was legitimate what'd you do with it? I just put it in, the, in a wee bag and put it in the bin like. see I couldn't have done like first we've had a, a mouse twice uh -huh. right not the same guy now the first time, I didn't want to be in the house. Yeah. Until it was taken care of. I couldn't. Like, honestly, yeah. like, I'm not saying that for comedic effect. Uh -huh. I did not want to be in the house until I heard the mouse was gone. Yeah. And I loved to be, like, protective and all that kind of thing. Of mice? No, of my family. Shane, the great mouse protector. <laughs> <laughs> I look like a guy who'd be a mouse yeah. protector. <laughs> right? But I was like, I don't want to be here. We've got the mouse. The second time I heard there's a mouse in this house, I was a lot more, I was talking to Dr. Seuss, <laughs> I was a lot more laid back. I, I didn't like it at all. I hated it. But I, I if I'd have seen a mouse the first time, yeah. I'd have ran the opposite direction. This time, I'd have ran for the mouse if I saw it. But then just scream at it and give it a heart attack. Kill it now. You'll know that. You go, ah. Oh, There's a difference in you running towards someone and doing but that. But I didn't run. I popped my head up a tunnel and started banging my stick. Uh, <laughs> but we got him. Yeah, and well, how did you get them though? Because there's, I, I've had mice experiences throughout I my mean, life. I mean, the real way or the. I'll be honest, because there are different ways now. Everyone tries to be more like fucked him up. Because <laughs> we've had my, mice in my house growing up, and there's, I remember there's as two lodgers. ways. Pardon? Like as lodgers, yes, just as lodgers, just because you know, times are tough. Yeah, you know. So there was one time we got it like with this wee like trick thing. So it goes in, it goes. Oh, there's a bit of cheese in there, mate. But here's the thing. They don't really love cheese. That's just cartoons. Stick a wee Mars bar in there, the bastards go berserk. Right. So this wee mouse goes, I smell Mars bar. He goes trapped like that. And then what we did, we just went up the window. But what Hill. do you mean trapped? It? Just what? trapped. Just in it. It's not dead. Just trapped. Just in caught. a what? Like in a wee mouse trap. It's just it's like a thing. It's like this. It's like that shape. So when he walks up the way, it tips it and the lid closes oh, and he's that's, trapped. That's, yeah. So he did that. He got the Mars bar. We took him to Winnie Hill and went, yeah. And, and just, you let him out free? Just fucked him into someone's house, into someone's garden. Nice. Go. And that was fine. But then my dad was like, I've had enough of these bastards. And he got like proper 
like 1970s mouse traps. You know the ones that if you put your fingers in, they're gone. And he let let a few of these ones out and put the Mars bars on because the wee bastards love a Mars bar. And he left one out and he goes, "I've got one. Do you want to see?" I was like, "Yeah, sure. Let's go and see." What age would you have been roughly? Twelve. Right. And I went in and it had got the mouse, but not properly. So it had like got it between its wee legs and its nose. So its nose and legs were squished, but its tail and all was still going, and there was blood everywhere. And he goes, "I don't fuck with me," you know. And I was like. <laughs> Are you threat? Like, what are you saying? If I mess you, you're going to break my fucking arms and neck. Like, I don't know. And he goes, ah, yeah, fucking. That's it. And I go, he's not dead. What are you going to do? And he goes, oh, I know what I'll do. And you know what he did? Uh. He got another mouse trap. So he got another one. And he put it on top of it. I thought he's just going to, like, put, like, his back in and slam it. But he put the other mouse trap on top of it. Like, so, like, to make a, a wedge. And he was like, you got to do it humanely. you got to kill him as quick as possible. She took a hammer. <laughs> And it didn't kill it humanely at all. It was fucking horrendous. Like, if he just hit it with a hammer, it would have killed it. All he did is probably broke all the bones in the body. And he must have hit this mouse about three times with me watching as a lesson to be a man. <laughs> I was like, cheers, Dad. I'm actually traumatised. <laughs> and then what he did, he said, go ahead and get a Tesco bag and bucket in the bin. I was like, that was sticking with me at my dad. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to horrible. say it was a humane trap. No, but then... I, I was very, like... Say I watch, like, people on TV and they've been, like, you know, displaced because of a war or whatever. Oh, I've, no. I watch that it's and I'm like, deep. I'm like, oh, man, you know, let's get these guys somewhere to be. Let's get these guys to safety. You know, they don't want to be here. Let's find something for them and let my heart goes out. There was a mouse in our house that obviously uh -huh. was just there by mistake and didn't yeah. want to be there and he was scared and stuff. I remember ringing a guy and being like, we will get him throw everything at it mm -hmm. you know I was like the m money's no object get this guy yeah. and he got him and I would say we didn't use a Mars bar we used peanut butter mm -hmm. and we got him now I heard remember you were a bad boy when you were about 13, 14 mm -hmm. you were in a little bit of trouble your dad just left the Mars bar at the end of a trap <laughs> <with you. laughs> but I mean I, I would fall for it every time a Mars yeah. bar is a Mars bar you know yeah. see if it's a Mars bar ice cream kill me Oh, more boys. They, they are unbelievable. The nicest. But like, mice just being around, I think you kind of got to accept. But then see, but sometimes too, I think mice, to me, are in the same category of like, quicksand. Do you know what I mean? They're things that people are too afraid of. That They're not that generally you People are too afraid of quicksand. Yeah, because in your day-to-day -day life, you're not getting trapped in quicksand. Another no. thing I used to be terrified of, which is ridiculous, cannibals with big pots in the jungle. Yeah. You know what I mean, I used to be like, oh, I've got to watch from going. These cannibals are going to yeah. take me. And I mean, you could feed a tribe with me. Are you yeah, getting a good yeah, steward yeah, yeah. of me? And I was like, well, I don't want to go any, near any forest in case those cannibals get me. Polymore? You know, exactly. I mean, yeah. no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Hard in the bat. No way. You're walking around Crawford Burn County yeah. Park. Like, Careful, guys. Are they? Like, you know, the guys with bones between their nose. Yeah. Like, oh, no. And like, mice are the same because they are a problem, but they're not like, ter like you know, when people yes. are terrified of them, it's like, yes. not really. And a lot of time, they will just go, go away again, you know? No. Go away. Like, I, I have more of an issue with cats than I have with mice. See, cats have become my friend now. Mm -hmm. We we have a cat next door that I brought into the house for a day just to, like, walk around in case any potential mice were thinking, you know, or mice would look in our windows think, oh, I, look, so I, I like to go in there. You're not just, like, no. a, a nature boy. You're not just going out being, like, puss, 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 no. puss, puss, no. puss, no. <laughs> <laughs> pun, 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 <laughs> Um... <laughs> Now, I, I want to talk about, you were talking about um, quicksand. Mm -hmm. Is one of the things we bonded over the most, our love of, the prank that Egyptian television <laughs> played on professional football, or is it Ramadan Sobi? Oh, Ramadan Sobi. That was, without a doubt, one of the slyest, but also best. Like, pranks, people are like, well, pranks are shit. They're the lowest form of comp. No. Pranks if a prank's are, done well, there's nothing funnier. Pranks how, are 10 out of 10. How people react to this. I don't know if you're able to like link this or something, but Damn. people need are to see Are you able this. to uh, oh. play something for us? Because this is the best. Uh, it's it's The guy's called Sobi, S-O-B-E-H-I. Uh -huh. He used to play for Stoke, um, and he's a Egyptian international footballer. And he was like, so if you write Sobi, H-I. Prank. Quicksand. But, I mean, you know what, here's the thing about a prank. See if a prank is done and it's there's a wee bit of jeopardy. Yeah, it's, a it's good. But see if you genuinely think you're going to die. Yeah. That's, 
uh, completely obscene. So like pranks are like, oh, you've been framed, yeah. you know. This guy, my this guy's car fell into a lake, and he's like, oh, yeah. fuck's sake, and all. And then it's not really his car. Jeremy Beadle comes out to good laugh. Oh, by the way, see, whenever we're talking about cars falling in the lake, this is the thing I do because I live quite near sea. I keep a couple of Stanley knives in each of my glove boxes. We life hack for you in case I ever get in the water and you cut seat belts out. Why was the seatbelt not just open? Sometimes underwater it might malfunction, you know what I mean? That's, How I've do you seen a lot of casualty on the TV and I've seen a lot of EastEnders. And Genuine like question, oh. in a situation like that, how do you get out? Your car goes in the water, goes underwater. Mm -hmm. How do you open doors or windows? Is it's the hard. pressure not? Yeah. What you should also do is keep a wee toffee hammer in there. You know, and that like will break buses. the window? Yeah, keep a wee... Um, but cause that, that's that, a prank. That, that's just a life hack for people. Just um so the background of this is mm -hmm. uh, Sobi is an Egyptian international footballer and there's this prankster guy in Egypt, this wacky prankster. And what he does for pranks is make you think that you're going to die yes. in the worst way possible. Yeah. So they've told Sobi that he's doing like some TV shoot and they want to take him into the desert mm -hmm. to film something. I mean, look, Ramez, guy, that's what the guy's look at Ramez's face. He, he's such a prankster. He's got those uh, steampunk right. goggles on. Right, so right. here's so, so Sobi is in a uh, buggy going across the desert. Look at Ram. Like, what you this is Ram. There's Sobi going. Why is Ram? has got that weird outfit on. Sorry, Sobi. Sobi's car is going down. The car he's in. They're like how frightened Sobi is. They're like, oh no, we're stuck in quicksand, right? So this would be. This is a terrible prank, as is. Yeah. Right. So him and his team are getting out. <laughs> now Ramez has an outfit on. You're going to see what he does with yeah. that in a second. Now, Sobi's a young guy. Look, yeah. look so like the guy with him is drowning. He thinks this guy's dying in quicksand. Right, he thinks this cameraman's oh, like away. He's gone. <laughs> so Sobi's like, I've just watched the guy die. Right. Everybody else is in on it, right? <laughs> so the car's going down. They're trying to climb up on top of the car. Everyone else is the in on it. The sand's going in the car. Right. So look, we, Ramez is just loving life. So they're trying to, like, get him out. Now, what's, Ra now, Ra <laughs> what's Ramez doing? Ramez is uh, getting some prosthetics done. So, yeah. so Sobi at this point is a young man who uh -huh. thinks he's going to die yeah. today. Uh, so this is like the Egyptian version of punk, I guess. <laughs> um, so you're going, what's going on here? So Sobi thinks he's stranded and they can't move. And at this point, he thinks, he's, he thinks he's, a, a giant Komodo dragon is walking out of the cave, but that's Ramez. So he thinks they're stranded and now this dragon is coming to eat us. So if he doesn't dry in the quicksand, he's going to be eaten by a kimono dragon. Can I just point out, you said kimono dragon. All right. That's just you the weekend. This is <laughs> but look at him, he is petrified. Yeah, he thinks he's going to die. Like, <laughs> But when, will you see when Mar or Ramez? Maris, <laughs> so Ramez is fast approaching him. Yeah, he thinks he's dying. Yeah. Uh, oh, look at his face. Like, what part of this is a prank? <laughs> the guy thinks he's dying. Can you imagine if if uh, he was at Stoke at the time and Pulis saw this? Oh, He'd be so no. cross. So he thinks this Komodo dragon, yeah, is going to eat him. Like, she's going down. Look, and that's his actual clothes being covered in, in this ad. Yeah. <laughs> right, this is where Ram is. Stands up. Hello, mate. And reveals himself. <laughs> it was a prank, mate. You're on gotcha. You're on TV. <laughs> and Sobi absolutely loses. And what wasn't on that clip is he absolutely loses his mind, as you would. Yes. Like that's not a prank. No. Like you say, like a prank is like, oh Dave, you're, you you got a parking ticket here, and oh. you get down to the car park and there's no parking yeah. ticket. But no, thinking you're going. Not only are you going to die. Yeah. But you've watched two people die. Yeah. You think your wife's and, gonna die? You're and you're gonna dying die. in the worst way. Yeah, you're, gonna, you're dying oh. in quicksand, and a dragon, as you're about to go down, is gonna eat your head. I actually, in that scenario, would be relieved. I think to be eaten by a dragon. I think the thought of like suffocating, not drowning on, in sand, yeah. would be, oh my god, that's the worst. Oh, you'd rather get eaten by a dragon. Yeah, rather get eaten by a dragon. And that's kind of a cool way to go, isn't it? Like getting eaten by a dragon, like you could kill by a yeah. dragon. Yeah, it's pretty. It is pretty cool. You wouldn't say Komodo dragon. You know, you'd leave yeah. that bit out. You'd just say dragon. Yeah, he was, was eaten by a dragon. Yeah, but that. Would, was that was unbelievable? What a prank! I love a good prank, but that, that's up there. With some of the, do we think the dragons ever. are no. dragons never existed, right? No. Okay. You were waiting for them to be like, well, maybe. Yeah. You know, somewhere. If you could, um, if you could bring an endangered animal back from an like oh, extinct, so insti extinct, insti extinct, extinct, okay, because they're all endangered. <laughs> An extinct animal? Do you have one in mind that you bring back? Well, like they're you're trying to bring them all back. They're trying to bring back saber-toothed tigers. 
but I don't know, like, for what purpose? Has anybody ever seen Jurassic Park? Yeah. It's not worth it. No. Don't bring a saber-toothed tiger no. back. There's no need. Like, if you're bringing a one from that time, you bring a, a wee friendly woolly mammoth, but then those motherfuckers have those tusks. Mm -hmm. So you don't know. Imagine them just kicking around Shaftesbury Square. That'd be yeah. a problem. That'd be a nightmare. And, like, I don't know, like, because, like, you know, wolves used to roam around Ireland. That's another like thing. Anything? I went to, have you ever been to Wild Ireland? It's a place just in Donegal where they yeah. like it's conservation. They and got woods. Yeah, so they they have they bring the animals that were indigenous to Ireland, and they have them there. So like the wolves, the bears, snakes. Things. Oh no, sure, Paddy dealt with that. But they're they're McDonald? basically their 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 message. No, Kilty. <laughs> their message was like our goal here is to try and bring these animals that used to be indigenous here, and then eventually we'll just let them out. That's right. And then the na the people who live by it are like, hold on a second, that's not a great idea. And you're yeah. like, what do you mean? He goes, Andrew Rangan. You're, you're just going to release a bear. And they're like, well, they're originally here. And it's like, no, but don't release yeah, it's not, the bear. It's not a the good wolves. No. system. But it was a nice place to visit. But for sure, don't just release them into the. So, what are, have you been? Side. Yeah. So, what do they have? Like, uh, wolf wolves? You, how about this? You tell me what they have, and I'll say, yeah, no. Uh, wolves. Yes. By the way, wolves, bigger than you think. Oh, yeah? Yeah, big boys, like. Um, but then wolves are fucking problematic because I'm a dog guy so I'd see a wolf and be like give me five minutes with them and I'll be round rubbing its tummy and all what about uh, bears yes they have bears being serious they have bears yeah was there bears in Ireland yeah back in the day that's Holy why shit. yeah not, yeah. back at not recently no, no not recently no um, Dan could you bring up Wild Ireland and let's have a look at what they uh, what well they this have? is what we should do we should go there someday as a Patreon exclusive and just try That'd and be release unbelievable. try to release that. the animals See, that's our prank. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, so let's see what they have. They have a wild Arctic experience. Oh, look at that wolf. That is lovely. Yeah. And they've got goats. I mean, I feel like they're not like... Have you ever extinct. seen the film The Witch? It's a horror film. There's a goat in it and the whole way through it. It's the devil, apparently. It's called Black Phillip. This uh, goat looks like that. About us. They have lynx. Remember there was always big cat sightings? Wasn't that like a real late 90s thing? Yes. Oh, there's a big cat. There's a there's a leopard scene in this field, and there never was. So you're right, they have bears. Yeah, they've got bears. They've I got feel like they have bears and wolves, and that's what yeah. they really put up front on the website here. But you know what? Like, seeing the wee gift shop, that's where they're making their dough off the cuddly toys of the bears and the wolves. They have the rescue Warthog monkeys, the wild boar. Good. Yeah. The wolves now, I do want to say Ireland. the rescue monkeys, I don't know how indigenous they are to Ireland. Yeah. Pop belly pigs. Like, there must, have been, there must be some place. I bet you... You know, a big farmer somewhere that's in the middle of fl flipping like Tipperary or something has like a random big animal. That well, you Calvin, who's who's uh, you know accompanying me on the tour, taking photos, you, and you know Calvin, yes. too, Calvin Craig. Yeah, he knows a guy who has a tiger that See? lives near him, Mike just Craig. like in in uh, Balamoni, I want to say. But you know what? Here's the thing too about that: you never see with someone like in Balamoni has a tiger. You're not seeing a regal, well kept, thick furred, conditioned tiger. It's always like it looks like Scar from the Lion King. Yeah. It's always a decrepit wee thing with fleas, and you're like, oh no, yeah. you should probably just give that back to Africa. But would you, do you think if you had that, you'd be like tempted to just like let it out? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would definitely be funny. Yeah. You know, imagine <laughs> I'm coming. I'd be here. one of those pranks. Yeah. <laughs> imagine coming here to work for the day. Can I bring my pet? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Have you seen that video of the? It's like viral video of like all these like big Middle Eastern guys that all look like you and they're in a swimming pool in like what looks like Dubai or somewhere or Qatar and then this guy just like for the yes. lets a tiger yeah, in the swimming pool. a big white tiger. Yeah. yeah. And a guy gets out like I imagine you get out of the pool. <laughs> he like sort of like puts his hand out and then like rolls, rolls out of the pool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I used to do that in the gym I used to go to, you know, the one up in, in Hollywood there yeah. where there's a hot tub and it, my party trick was to be able to go from the hot tub to the swim pool one motion like Shamu is. <laughs> Very skillful. Like just swish out and slide in. <laughs> great. And then I watch Blackfish and that ruined Shamu for me. Yeah. Fuck's sake. Yeah, but you could still do that as a tribute to Yes. I'm sure he'd love that. True. But then I that's another thing, they just start dropping that Shamu's not just the one animal. You know, there's many Shamus, they just give it your Shamu, mate. It's like the Pope. Uh, or the sugar you know? babes. Yeah. Yeah. you you are Shamu. It's like the Pope or the sugar babes. Yeah, both similar things. What would you rather be? Uh probably the Pope, I think. I could get away with doing whatever you want more. And if you're a sugar babe, you know, like not, if you're a sugar babe, you might have some financial constraints, you know what I mean? But if you're the... Yeah, the, if you, sorry, would you rather be the Pope, a sugar babe at the peak sugar babes or a sugar babe now? I'd still be the Pope, because I right. think, right, you're the Pope. 
I think if you were the Pope, power would go to your head. You'd be ridiculous. Jesus. But we're hitting up four uh, thousand patrons with powers going to my head. Yeah, imagine, but imagine the you're the Pope. But you, anything you want, you'd be like, I need this. You would yeah. get it. Yeah, you know what I mean. And be like, I oh, know. But then you'd be like, eh, Pope. Yeah, you know, it's not me. It's God wants it. You're basically God on earth. Yeah, you know what I mean. The po- it'd be hard to beat being the Pope. Yeah. Oh, can I get the latest Dre beats? Yeah. Do you need them? Because then, and then they're like, oh, listen, you have to behave a certain way if you're the Pope. You, there's certain rules you have to yeah. do. And then old Cardinal Ratzinger's like, nah, I'm checking out. I've got dementia. Bye. And they're like, well, that's not the Pope's rules. And he's like, is he the I'm guy that like called it a day? He's like, yeah. folks, I'm heading on here. What I loved about that. Do you have just, to be a Pope till you die? Yeah. Well, oh. until he was like, no, because I think what had happened, he was like mentally, I think, diminishing. And they're like, oh, we can't have Like him. a tiger in a garden of money. Correct. And they're like, you can't be having you making Pope decisions when you're boogaloo, like. You know, so they're like, I'll tell you what you do. You get on that helicopter. I was like the end of The Apprentice or something, or succession. <laughs> get on that helicopter and he just disappeared. No one knows where he went. Right. And off he went. I Pope. Was he Benedict? That was, he disappeared. Benedictus. I Pope Benedict. One of my favourite pieces of music, uh, Carl Jenkins, Benedictus. Nice. I thought you were going to say Pope Benedict's just been working on some side projects <laughs> since he retired. <laughs> Irmanoff! A dance hall album. <laughs> but then I like Whoa, Pope Fra- But Pope Francis, he's going the other way now too. Like he's trying to be too much of a man. Trying to be all prod. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be the other way. <laughs> but he's like, I don't want to wear a golden necklace. I want it to be made of wood because gold's too expensive. You know, whereas Ratzinger or Benedict's like, you know, bring me, me out. Give me Louis Vuitton, like you know, yeah, make, yeah, make, yeah. make me ball. Yeah. So I think I'd be I, like. There's a film out, isn't there? The two popes. I'd like to watch. It looks quite good. Can I tell you something? Mm-hmm. In when I was in LA, I um near where we were staying, there was this like jewelry shop, and it's this London jeweler, mm-hmm. and Niall was like, "Oh, they want you want to see their stuff," and I went in and I tried on a chain, and I nearly uh-huh. bought it. How much can you say? It was like a hundred and fifty dollars, but it was a wee silver chain, and I tried it on. Because in my head, I was like, I think I'd shoot a chain. Yeah. And I just couldn't do it. I feel though that the chain would be like marijuana is to, to other drugs. You know, you get a chain, the next thing you It's know, a gateway. Yeah, it's a gateway. It's gateway jewellery. Yeah, it's gateway jewellery. You'd start with the chain, and next thing you have a ring that wasn't your wedding ring. In a week. Then you get the wee earrings and all, and then yeah. you get the, the eyebrow piercing. And then, and then it'd be like Xerxes from 300. I'd have like <laughs> the nose ring connected to the earring, connected to a nipple ring, connected yeah. to a Prince <laughs> Albert. You'd be like a puppet. <laughs> I mean, that's maybe what I need to do. I need to get all those piercings, and then if I have the nipples and the nose pierced and the dick pierced, if I'm pissing, I can just lift yeah. this up and I won't have to set my dick in the rim. <laughs> it make a lot of sense. Uh, Will you ever get a piercing? I can see you having a big midlife crisis getting a stud. I would, I mean, I wish, but not a piercing. Um, I think uh, maybe if we were to get anywhere pierced, I'll get my nipples pierced just because that's funny, isn't it? Like it's a weird thing. Yeah, that's gross. a it's a wacky prank. But <laughs> I have my I'd, nipple pierced that no one sees. But I don't I don't think I'll get in pierced. Right. I don't. Would you get in pierced? Never. No. What I you, pierced what my you? I pierced my ear for a fancy dress party once. Can't remember what you it was. You can get as. clip-ons or magnetics, you know. I know, but I had a few drinks and I got my cousin Connor to put a, a needle through my ear and then put an earring in. Put, a, put two ice cubes on either side of it for like ten minutes. Totally numb. Did it hurt? No, Probably. totally no. All right, okay. And then took it out the next day. Do you have know. a pierced anything, boys? Fosty? I could see Dan. You probably had your eyebrow pierced back in the day, did you? No, never. No? I, don't I had the eyebrow no. pierced. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I remember. You had your eyebrow pierced. Yeah. Do you have anything else pierced, Fosty? Do you have your ear pierced? See a guy with a pierced eyebrow. It says one thing and one thing only to me: drugs. You know, <laughs> like if you see a guy with a pierced eyebrow, like you know what you you can get stuff from me. You know what I mean? You know where it's at. Like, yeah. Comedians aren't really guys that have piercings. But some of like we one earring pierces, piercings yeah. done too. Yeah, Victorio like did a la- late in life ear piercing. Yeah, did a who else did I see recently had one, and it's just, it's I just don't I find find it weird. You know what I mean? Like I just for well for me personally, if other people yeah. work away, but I just don't know what I would do if I had it done. Like you'd expect Willie to have more piercings than he does. He looks like a wee eyebrow guy. Yeah, like you'd say, you could see him growing up with wee, like having the wee. I bet you he got his ears pierced before he could consent to it. I bet you his dad was like, "You're getting your ears pierced." Yeah, and he's like three months. And he's like, yeah, because <laughs> I, I when I was growing up, I was like, when I'm older, I'm gonna get both ears pierced, and then the middle of my ear too. Yeah, and then you know what's happened though too. You know your man out of lost profits, who's a total pervert creep guy. It's in jail. Understood. He had, he had those pierces creep that were stretched, right? Oh, and spacers. Like, yeah, and I think now any time I see those, I think you're a pedo. You know. So that's just eyebrow piercing, drugs, yeah, spacer, pedo, pedo, yeah, and you know another thing too, like unless you're in like some sort of unknown African tribe, 
you know, you once you take those out, it's weird just have earlobes down apparently, here. I was talking to someone about this recently. Apparently, they close. Nah, that's fake news. Not if, if they're if big. If you go to, yeah, you, have yeah. to, you have to get it cut down. Because, you know, the only two bits of your body that don't stop growing as you go, all apart from hair and stuff, is your earlobes well, and your nose. You know? Huh? So, like, my mind will grow here and there. Like, but Your nose doesn't stop growing? No, your nose keeps growing. So when that's when you see old men with big schnozzes and these long ears. Not, not a good look, sure, no, it's not. not sweet. Big yeah. long lobes. I long lobes. That's yeah. something like Game I'm left to 104. <laughs> I mean, you look terrible. <laughs> you, that would be your character, Game long of Thrones. Lobes? You'd have no hair on the top, just really long on the sides, and these lobes, and you tie it under your chin. And long lobes. And because you'd have the long fingers, you'd be some sort of prophet. Uh, that's what I would say. I am the oracle of the future. <laughs> I'm protector of the mice. <laughs> <laughs> And then when you really want to get business done, <laughs> you tie your lobes behind your head. Right, let's let's go to work. But I can give a big blowjob. <laughs> I see pleasure in your future. <laughs> That's uh, <so> stupid. <laughs> You walk in, I'm just ramming a chicken. <laughs> what troubles you? <laughs> Long lobes. I need your counsel. Oh, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> what will it cost me, Long Lobes? Your bottom. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, you're bald. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my so real talk. Oh, 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 oh. um, yeah, we could go to Wild Ireland. They've got bears, wolves, <sighs> lynx, wild boar, and Barbary maquettes. Macaques, is it? <laughs> Macaques, yeah. I wonder what they. Eat. Were they native to Ireland? Nah, I think, I think what they've done is they've got this facility and they're like, oh, these are pretty cool. Yeah, Fuck they've got a deal on them, Jake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Them in. Wholesale price. Yeah, you buy 12 links, you get a free barber. But tell you what, do you ever look at these? Like, I'm looking at a wild boar going, I bet you had to be tasty. Oh, I'm sorry, you've had wild boar before, surely. Say, so, you know, I've eaten alligator. Not so nice. have I. Yeah. In Florida, I had some uh, breadcrumbs and cheese. I thought it was nice. Oh, see, I had it off the bone. Like, it was just like, it was horrible. Where? In the Everglades? Africa, mate. In the wreaths? South Africa. Nice. Yeah. Um, have you anything you want to plug, my friend? Anything apart, uh, Sly Guy Podcast? Yeah, Sly Guy Podcast is out every Thursday. And then if you want early access, there's a Patreon. It's a Wednesday. Um, when does this go out, this episode? Uh, like, uh, 6th of December. Fuck, well, then no. Because I've done my show on the 7th of December, which has sold out nearly already. There's a couple of tickets left just. And then... Other than that, just follow me on socials, Dave LA Comedy, see what I'm up to, put everything there, you know, and again, thanks for having me, it's been a lot of fun today, I've enjoyed this thoroughly. It's a lot of silly fun. It's very silly. We'll um, go for lunch? Stuff. Like, we'll go for some lunch, yeah, right. we'll break bread. Thank Happy you, brother. Times. Thank you. Love you. Love you too. Mm-hmm.